So in 2005, Silverstone created the perfect chassis, the TJ07. And I, nah, okay, it's not quite perfect. My TJ07, the TJ07 is the case I use for my personal machine. My TJ07 has the interior painted black. It has some modifications. I've taken out the hard drive cages. I have used the back of the motherboard tray for mounting SSDs. I've taken out the front bay covers and I've replaced them with mesh. Um, I've dremeled out some of the back for cable routing. Basically, I've made some, some ch changes. But the chassis itself with its all aluminum unibody design is, in my opinion, the finest case ever made. Now, when Silverstone launched the TJ11, I was very curious to have a look at it because the TJ11 is something of a spiritual successor to the TJ07 with some key improvements in technology that have been made in the last five years. So the TJ11 is actually larger than the TJ07. The TJ07 has seven front bays. TJ11 has nine, so it's quite a bit taller. It's also wider. And so what are they using that extra height for? Well, for one thing, the TJ07 is great for liquid cooling. That's what I do with mine. I actually have a quad 120 mil radiator in the bottom. The TJ11 allows up to a quad 140 mil radiator. So you got more space in the bottom. They've also implemented the concept that was introduced with the Raven series of chassis with the RV01, which is the 90 degree altered um, motherboard mounting, so the cards actually have their I.O. ports at the top of the chassis rather than the back of it. And other than that, yeah, we've increased the size, we've put in the 90 degree mounting, and I think that is pretty much it for what I had to say. So I'm going to let Silverstone's packaging and documentation here do the rest of the talking. Okay, so it's like my... My packing came off while I was taking it out of the box. But give me a second to get this unwrapped and then I will show you guys the TJ11. So we've got the TJ11 extracted from the box. You can clearly see that with me standing next to it, the case appears very large. With pretty much anyone standing next to it, the case is going to appear pretty large. So let's just go through what Silverstone has to say for themselves on the outside of the box, which we haven't quite done yet. So not content with its past achievements, Silverstone engineers aim to set another benchmark. Okay, so beautifully crafted, all aluminum TJ11 is a pleasure to work with. It's free of rivets. Now this is part of what allowed me to make the modifications that I was able to make to my TJ07. It can be completely deconstructed and reconstructed very easily, even if you need to take it apart, paint it, and put it all completely back together. It's also easier to clean for that reason as well. I've taken it apart a few times. So they have kept with this uh, proud tradition with the TJ11. You can completely take it apart. Bigger lower compartment to house even the largest radiator available. Talked about that as well. Potential and flexibility are truly unrivaled. Um, okay, a thousand watt plus cooling capacity on air. You can build an impressive storage server with its plethora of drive bay options or even an amazing piece of technology artwork with liquid cooling. So this has all been covered so far. Plenty of ergonomic touches such as quick access filters, hot swappable hard drive bays which the TJ07 did not have, removable motherboard tray which the 07 did have, CPU black backplate cutout which the 07, my 07 doesn't have but I believe the newer ones do, and an optimized cable routing path to enable easy maintenance and upgrades for efficiency. Awesome? Okay. Let's move along here. So the 90 degree motherboard mounting I've already talked about. It includes two air penetrator air AP181 fans to aid stack cooling. So that is their uh, cooling design with the motherboard rotated 90 degrees. Extra large venting area for the 10th expansion slot, which we'll have to show you later. Rivet feed free construction, room for powerful water cooling equipment, dual power supply support. That's another thing that it carries over from its uh, predecessor, the TJ07, all aluminum construction with anodized sandblasted finish. Now this I'm really glad to see, check this out. So on the TJ07 we had the anodized sandblast finish which is kind of a, a rough finish. I don't want to touch it because I don't want to leave fingerprints. Um, and then on the sides we had a brushed finish. Now brushed finishes, I love them, they look beautiful, but they're a fingerprint disaster. You touch them and it, it actually etches into the aluminum from your fingerprints and you can't even rub it off if you let that those oils sit there for long enough. Whereas with the um, with these sandblasted finishes they're actually far more durable in terms of being uh, well, they're harder to scratch, they're more difficult to damage with your fingers etc etc. So for the side panels, mine particularly, have um, irremovable marks 
indelible marks at the back from, from taking it off and putting it on, so you should be able to avoid that with this case. All right, a Silverstone exclusive dual extruded aluminum unibody frame with thickness of up to 4.5 millimeters. So the unibody frame, here they're talking about a single piece that, here, where are they saying? Yeah, the single piece that runs through the entire front curve of the chassis. So that is something that's been carried over from the TGO7. Nine five and a quarter inch bays, twin removable hard drive cages with built-in CPO5 hot swappable adapters. We'll have to show you that in a minute. Six three and a half inch hard drive trays with, uh, you can look at this picture over here so that they can see for now. Um, six three and a half inch hard drive bays built using industrial grade nylon. Very cool, okay. And then massive lower compartment, we've talked about that before, power supply housing area for up to two power supplies, dual see-through air intake vents with removable filters, okay, uh, pen air penetrator fans, yep, yep, top mounted slide out motherboard tray system to facilitate installation, nine plus one expansion slots enable support for XL ATX motherboards and multi-GPU configuration. So that's a big one as well. The TJ11 is actually one of the few cases on the market that can accept something like a Gigabyte G1 Assassin motherboard natively with no modifications whatsoever. All right, let's take the side panel off. Oh, we can have a look at the accessories that are included as well. So we've got three SSD adapters. So that's uh, two and a half to three and a half inch adapter. Oh, look at this. They let you decide if you want to put on the Silverstone badge or not. So it just comes with a double-sided tape on it. So you can either put that on your case or you can not. Is there a particular place it goes? No, you decide. Excellent. All right, uh, dual power supply adapter. Just a relay so that they'll both turn on at the same time. Fan filters, two of them. Oh, they're magnetic, nice. All right, TJ11 manual, screws. Another Silverstone uh, badge. This one's not made of metal. It's more of a sticker, but it's smaller. It's also nice. Yeah, this is a metal sticker, by the way. It's very, very nice. Okay, we've got a, a Molex to three three pin adapter for your fans. And then finally, we have the single uh, redundant power supply option here if you're building like a high end workstation and uh, you're going to put that in a Silverstone TJ11. Here's the side panel. Oh, there's that extra screw. I was wondering where that went. Okay, here is the side panel. It's very thick. Look at that piece of aluminum right there. It's incredibly thick, heavy-duty construction. That's what makes this case even remotely workable with, though, the fact that it's made of aluminum. If this was made of steel, it would weigh more than I can carry. I'll tell you guys that much. So you can see here, this is completely free access for the air, air penetrator fans here to fresh airflow from the outside. And then down here, these grills are all opened up so that for people who are gonna remove the lower hard drive cages and mount a large radiator down there, they will have all the access to airflow that they need for the cooling fans on the radiator itself. So since this is a uh, sort of a, like a backwards case, I've actually opened up well, it's like backwards and then rotated 90 degrees. So I've actually opened up what would normally be the correct side to see the motherboard tray itself, but in this case it's not. Oh yeah, and it comes with uh, an anodized aluminum mouse pad as well, which is just gorgeous. All right, so let's open up the other side. Give me just a minute here. I won't make you guys sit through that. So I opened it up, but I realized we're not really done with the outside. So up here on the top of the case, we've got an enormous grilled area. So this is actually the main exhaust for the case. The back of the chassis itself actually has no room for exhaust at all because that is not the function of the back of this case. So let's go ahead and take this off. It's just held in place by clips. All right, now you can see what would normally be the back of a computer case. So there's your I.O. Here's where you can plug in the front USB if you're not using the internal headers. All right, and there are your nine plus one. Okay, what does that mean? So nine plus, oh, just, this is just ventilation space for that 10th spot. So there's your nine plus one uh, uh, PCI slots as well for your XL ATX motherboards. Lots of ventilation space around the sides and the bottom as well, and a 120 mil fan here at the back. The power button is also here on the top, and then on this side we've got two USB 3.0 ports as well as a reset switch, and then on the other side we have two USB 2.0 ports as well as our front audio ports. On the front, I want you guys to have a closer look. You can see the five and a quarter inch bays as well as 
oh, another power switch. So they've actually built in two power switches. So whether you want to turn, whether you want to have it sitting on the floor next to you and be able to reach the power switch here, or whether you want to have it up on your desk and reach the power switch here, you will have easy access to turn on the computer. Huh, it's kind of neat. All right, moving around to the other side. This case does include a side panel window, so you can see the uh, sexy hardware that you have hopefully installed in it, because if you're going to buy this case and put in like a, you know, micro ATX motherboard and like onboard video and yeah, then we'll just have to you know, stone you to death. Okay, so there you go. That's what it looks like with the window on and now off. And let's have a look at the internal features. So here we can install all of our five and a quarter inch devices. Here we can see the hot swappable three and a half inch bays. You can also see that, oh, I don't even know why it included SSD adapters because it looks like we can probably just screw SSDs natively onto these right there like that. Maybe there's ones that, uh, that don't have that piece. I'm not sure. Not 100% sure how these work. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Excellent. Okay, let's have a look at these other ones. It looks like they're all the same. Yep, those are all the same. So that's how the hard drives go in. Here are the enormous AP181 fans. So these are going to be blowing up at your components, which will be installed this way. So your video cards are going this way, lengthwise here. See that? All right, here is the motherboard tray, which as I mentioned before, supports up to XLATX. So that's where you have those longer motherboards like the G1 Assassin. Okay, here's our front USB 3.0 hookups. Let me just see where those cables come from. Yeah, it looks like if you wanted to hook those up to internal adapters, for the time being, you're going to need to get an adapter from these to an internal header. But since on this case, you're hiding all of these cables anyway, it's not nearly as big of a deal. All right, oh, speaking of the back, actually, there's a cutout right here which is going to allow you to run things like your, uh, your display cables up into the case without being obstructed by this piece right here. Okay. There's so much to this case. I'm sorry this video is so long, guys, but there's really nothing I can do about it. So the AP181s have filters on them, which are removable and cleanable. There you go. They have free access to all of the outside air, as I mentioned around on the other side, but that goes for both sides. All of the internal cables are black, black, black. So they're sleeved. There's your, uh, there's your dual power switch right there. See how it has two cables going into it. There's your power LED, hard drive LED, reset switch, your uh, front USB and your front HD audio is all there. Uh, here are the SATA cables for those hot swap bays. So you can either leave those in, plug all these into your motherboard and then leave them as hot swap. Or in my case, what I would be doing is I'd be removing them all, finding somewhere else to put my drives like, uh, like I did on my TJ07 is I bolted all my SSDs on the back of the motherboard tray, so I might do something like that, or mount them on the back of the five and a quarter inch bays, whatever the case may be. And uh, I think that pretty much covers everything that I have to say about the TJ11. For now, I'm actually going to be doing a new Extreme Buyer's Guide featuring the TJ11, so I invite you guys to stay tuned for that. I'm going to be finally updating my liquid cooling how-to with some higher performance part parts. I did uh, kind of a liquid cooling essentials guide way back when as episode number two of NCIX Tech Tips. So this time we're going to do it right. We're going to do it with the G1 Assassin and the TJ11 with some cool Swift Tech water cooling parts. And I'm definitely very excited about that. So stay tuned and uh, let's see what the TJ11 has in store. I've never built in it before, but on the surface it looks like it addresses pretty much ev any complaint I could have possibly had about my ideal case, the TJ07. We've got the black interior, we've got better cable management, it's roomier for more water cooling goodness, and other than that, I mean, what else, what else is there to change? Thanks for checking out my unboxing and first look. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings and computer videos.